Good evening. Welcome to Ash Wednesday service, the beginning of our 40-day journey of Lent. We'll begin our service today with our call to worship, which is a call in response. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart. Roll up your sleeves. Let down your guard. Come into the, for the storm. Make yourself at home. Pull up to the table. Release the tension in your jaw. Take a deep breath. Return to God with all your heart. May it be so. I invite you to stand and face the baptismal font for our confession and forgiveness. First, our call to Lent. Lent can sometimes get a negative reputation. It's viewed as the season in our faith when we give things up. We prepare for the worst. However, I can't imagine, help but imagine, that God wants more for us than just six weeks of discipline or six weeks without chocolate. I cannot help but imagine that God wants a life for us so expansive that faith, joy, and hope flow over the edges. So let us confess, not because we have to suffer our way through Lent, but because the truth moves us one step closer to that expansive faith. Let us confess together. Holy God, we confess we don't return to you fully. We share with you the pieces of our lives that are convenient. We put on different hats in different rooms. We forget that we are called, invited, and loved with all that we are, including our mess, our beauty, our faith, and our doubt. Forgive us and give us hearts that long to return. Friends, God sees you. God hears you. God loves you. You are forgiven and claimed with all that you are. Rest in that good news. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first, first reading is taken from Joel chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, 12 and 17, or 12 through 17, I'm sorry. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their love never has been from old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent? and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the prophets, Where is their God? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20b in chapter 6, verse 10. We entreat you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hungry, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known. As dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. chapter 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but your, by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So Ash Wednesday is about truth-telling. It's the day when we tell the truth about who we are, whose we are, and what that has to do with how we live in this world. On Ash Wednesday, we mark ourselves not for others to see our piety, which clearly is warned against in the gospel, but to remind ourselves of the truth. And the truth is that we are broken humans who have been claimed by God as beautiful and called to live lives of abundance. Because the fact is, this life here on earth will one day end. We heard in scripture over and over, return to the Lord your God. For God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in love, and relents from punishing. Return to the Lord. Isn't that our spiritual discipline of Lent? To return to the Lord? Because when we turn to the Lord, instead of always turning to ourselves, we'll have a faith And a life that is full to the brim, expansive. Return to the Lord, we are called to do. I think Lent can be a very powerful and unique time for us. Ash Wednesday, even more. For we do today something we rarely do in our society. We claim our mistakes, our shortcomings. We claim that we hurt others and ourselves. We claim that we often do not turn to God. Anybody guilty of that? But to ourselves. We publicly proclaim that we don't have it all together. Except for me, of course. Do you know how completely radical that really is? Imagine standing up in a crowd at work and admitting you totally dropped the ball and screwed up, screwed up the project or or lost a client. No excuses, just a total admittance that you messed it up for no other reason than you're a human being prone to failure. Can you imagine when you're a student standing up in school and admitting you failed, not because the test was too hard, not because the teacher failed to teach the material well, but because you didn't put the work into it, because you are human and prone to failure. Imagine if a government official 
Well, you can fill in the blank there. You know where I'm going with that one. In our world where public appearance can make or break you, where social status revolves around being interesting enough so people will follow you, where every little mistake can be broadcast worldwide, it is rare for any of us to admit our mistakes. <laughs> because we live in this time where messing up just isn't acceptable. Except here. Here in this place, every week, we admit that we are both saint and sinner in need of God's mercy. Have you ever thought just how radical that actually is? Lent and Ash Wednesday are special, especially our unique times that give us permission, actually requires us to confess, to self-reflect, and to return to God. We take this deep look into who we are, why we do the things we do, and what God wants for us and for this world. It's a time where it is okay when we look in the mirror, it's okay if we may not like everything we see. It's the time when we wear our mistakes on our foreheads, <laughs> admitting our humanity, admitting our mistakes, and admitting we need God. Amen? Amen. For we come from the earth, that's right, Lucas, and we will return to it until Christ comes again. Now, in our gospel Today, Jesus talks about piety and gives some warnings concerning it. But piety is how we show our devotedness to God. Hear that again. Piety is how we show our devotedness to God. And often in Matthew, piety is also translated as justice. Because it's through justice that we show our devotion to God. That term justice frames those three actions that Jesus talks about, almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. Those things are further acts of justice that engage and challenge our society. Can you imagine changing our society in one that accepts mistakes and offers grace and mercy? Ooh, that would be so radical. You see, the root for the word almsgiving is actually mercy, showing favor to others when they are undeserving. So almsgiving can be about sharing our resources, yes, as an act of community solidarity, and also includes showing mercy to people when failure has occur occurred. What if when someone fails, almsgiving is lending a hand? An idea, helping pick up the slack to fix the mistake without any credit for yourself. Simply to fix a problem and restore a person's reputation, almsgiving. And what if our prayers this Lent for justice were for justice to prevail for all people? And what if through our praying, God actually opens up to us opportunities to do such? opens up our seeing people for who they are and not for what they do or don't do that pleases us. And fasting, that's usually about our relationships with and the use of material resources. And during Lent, for some reason, it's especially, but not exclusively, food-related. But what if this Lent we fasted from judgment? from thinking others are less than ourselves in order to make ourselves feel better? What if we fasted from prejudice and preconceived ideas about people? These acts of piety have the potential to lead to an expansive Lent. Because Lent is a time where we increase our giving mercy, increase our attention to prayer, and decrease our focus on ourselves. Because the idea is that these disciplines help us return to whom? To God. And to be open to our neighbor. Lent helps us and our faith life to be full, 
to the brim. So as you can probably guess, our Lenten theme this year is full to the brim, an expansive Lent. And the devotionals that you took home today in the introduction say this, the origins of Lent were that one was to leave their old life behind and to fast and prepare to be baptized into a new way of living. In essence, this was a practice of stepping away from corrupt power, scarcity mentality, and empty rituals in order to live a more expansive and full life of faith. And so our Lenten theme, full to the brim, an expensive, an expensive, well, maybe, an expansive Lent is an invitation into a radically different Lent, into a full life. It's an invitation to be authentically who you are. Scary. To counter scarcity and justice at every turn, to pour out even more grace wherever it is needed. When we allow ourselves to be filled to the brim with God's lavish love, that love spills over. It reaches beyond ourselves like water. It rushes and flows, touching everything in its path. Full to the brim reminds us to live fully as we pursue justice and hope or express grief or gratitude. And so this Lent, let us trust fully that we belong to God. Let us increase our capacity to receive and give grace, yes? Let us discover the expansive life God dreams for us. Because Lent is a powerful time, and especially Ash Wednesday, because we do something we rarely do in this society. We claim our mistakes and our shortcomings. We publicly proclaim that we don't have it all together. Knowing, though, that that is only part of the story. Because the empty tomb tells a fuller, more expansive truth. That death will not have the last word. There is more. God is more. Do you see this beautiful art piece here? Look at the cross on his forehead. It's drawn in gold. The artist writes, What if instead of ashes, gold gleamed on our foreheads? What if alongside the certainty of death, we are also reminded of God's expansive grace? What if on this day, we said to one another, From stardust you have come, and to stardust you shall one day return. There's joy and relief and release in confessing our sins and acknowledging our humanity. It makes us mindful of our our own failings, but gives us the opportunity to unburden ourselves of the guilt that accompanies it. The joy of Lent is in this liberation from sin and the intense focus on God. So here's to an expansive Lent, one where because we return to the Lord, we are full to the brim with God's grace and mercy, even in our beautiful, broken humanity. Amen.
Drawn close to the heart of God, we we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Renew your church, O God. When we have drifted from our call to proclaim repentance and guide you, to guide your people toward justice, lead us back to you. Encourage believers who hold the church's open, doors open to those who have felt excluded. Renew your creation, O God. Transform parched places into watered gardens and preserve every creature that awaits the arrival of spring. Renew our civic life, O God. Teach those in authority to advocate for the liberation of all who are oppressed and grant them courage to make difficult decisions. Renew our lives, O God. Spare your people from diseases of the body, mind, or spirit, and send healing to those overcome by illness or grief. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. Renew this congregation, O God. During these 40 days of Lent, confirm our sense of mission and expand our imagination for ministry. Deepen our faith, increase our love, and draw us into your unfolding work of healing and restoration. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ.
off now, but. There's no mistakes at church. I invite you to stand as you are able and gather your communion packets. If you're visiting with us and don't have one, just do this, and I know someone will grab you one. Thank you, Linda. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God who knows us, we are amazed by you. Your love never runs out. Your hope never runs dry. Your joy never gives up. We wish that we could be more like you in that way. In a world that loves scarcity, your abundance is shocking. In a world that knows fear, your joy is compelling. In a world that knows anxiety, your peace is captivating. We long for these things. So today we ask you, be with us on the hamster wheel. Be with us when compassion fatigue rears her head. Be with us when stress makes it hard to breathe. Be with us when self-doubt pushes in close. Be with us when exhaustion becomes constant or when loneliness becomes our primary language. Be with us and show us the way to the life you long for us. Show us a life of expansive faith. Show us a life of overflowing joy. Show us a life of absorbing beauty. Show us a life of engrossing purpose. On that night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. The body of Christ, broken for you, take and eat. Again, after supper, he gave thanks, took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. And so we pray. Show us a life that is as honest and rich and meaningful as the one Jesus led. And until that expansive and holy day, we will continue to gather at this table. Until that day, we will continue to look for you in our midst. So pour out a double portion of yourself onto this bread and cup so that we might catch a glimpse of your goodness. God, we are amazed by you. Your love never runs out. So bring that never-ending loving love here. Let God's people say, amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. meal of grace you have fed us with your body the bread of life now send us forth to bear your life giving hope to a world in need amen, amen. receive the final blessing as you leave this place may you be awestruck by the beauty of this world may you laugh and may it be contagious May you overflow with love for those around you. May you be effusive with hope and quick to point out joy. And in all of your living and breathing and being, may you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit. And may it change your life. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go in peace, full to the brim. Amen. Amen.